Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our class. We're just going to admit everybody. How is everyone? We're all good? Thumbs up? Excellent. Ready to learn about the barbecue cookbook and the meter? Awesome. Okay, so we've got about 60, 65 people joining us today. So we're just going to wait a little bit longer until we start. You're probably wanting to learn about the margarita too. Oh, of course. <laughs> we have been a bit sneaky and we've already made a margarita, some of us. Well, I made one before and it was so cold that you needed a spoon. So cold? Yeah, it was. You would have needed to keep it for a while before it. Did you make the citrus margarita? No, just the ordinary. Well, maybe it was a citrus. I don't know. I just picked one and made it. That sounds like you, Joy, is it? Yes. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I know that accent. Well, may, have you got it sitting on the table now that you can maybe cheers and, and toast us and we can all have a margarita together? Oh, I didn't do it now. I did it. Oh, we could go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Who here has a meter? No. Yes, Lynn, no. Well, hopefully today you'll uh, see a few of us using the meter and, sorry, I'm just multitasking here, the meter and cooking recipes out of this amazing, beautiful cookbook, the barbecue cookbook, um, that is our purchase offer starting on Monday. And um, you'll get some hints and tips. And if you haven't purchased a meter, it might inspire you to to do so. I have never been um, one to love it until my husband started using it. And it's so amazing how you can just actually pop it into the meat and it's on the rotisserie. And I just sort of thought, oh, it's going to melt or it's going to, to destroy the meter. But no, it just um, cooks our roast perfectly every time. Right. Well, how many have we got? Half. What do we think? Do we think we get started? Yeah. All right. Let's start. Okay, so what I might do, and you all seem to um, know the drill because I think everyone is on mute, which is fabulous, but we just ask you to um, stay on mute. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. I'll be monitoring that chat throughout the class. Um, and also, if you have to jump off for any reason, um, we do actually have a YouTube channel now for our branch. So this, this class is going to be recorded and um, we'll put a recording on the YouTube channel and I will post the link in the chat so um, that you can save that. And there's also other classes that you may have missed in the past. Um, they're all going to be on our YouTube channel. So, yeah, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, and then after the class, you can stay on and if you've got any other questions that we may not have answered, um, we'll be staying on to answer them for you. Okay, so let's have some fun. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Nat McFarlane and I am the Business Development Manager for Branch Connects. So we're a newly formed branch, um, about two months in now and um, all the amazing knowledgeable team leaders are on today and they're going to show you all about the margarita, the barbecue cookbook, and the meter. So enjoy. Now, over to Katie, who is going to make a margarita for you all. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie. I will be making the margarita. Now, this particular cocktail is not from the barbecue cookbook, but it kind of rhymed with our name of the class, so that's what we went with. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you. There are lots of drinks in the barbecue cookbook. This is a watermelon lemonade. But if you want to make it adult, adults only, you could add vodka or a bottle of Prosecco, Malibu, something like that. Summer days look quite nice. You've got the pineapple and coconut mojito. That looks absolutely delicious. And there's a Pim's fruit punch. And what about some pear shrub? I don't know what that is, but sounds nice. Pears will be in season soon. 
and some sherbet mimosas. So there's some drinks that you could be making, but today we're going with the citrus margarita. So I've got all my ingredients ready and I've already salted my glass with some pink rock salt. So I've already done that. So tequila, I'm going with the Sierra tequila. So 130 grams of that goes in. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit over. Apparently the, the more yellow tequila is a lot more of a smoother finish. So if you don't want that really overly alcohol taste, the um, yellow tequila is smoother. Cointreau, I've just got the Voc triple sec brand. It's a bit cheaper than Cointreau. Next. Okay, so I've got my lemon. So it's just chopped and quartered and I picked out all the seeds. So that goes in. 30 grams of lime, all chopped up. And 90 grams of orange. Now I've gone with tangelo today because they look so good. And the orange, the tangelos are a, a hybrid with orange and mandarin together. So that should give it a nice flavor. Sugar syrup. Now you can just put sugar in just to take that um, acidity away. But what I find is that the granules don't really dissolve properly because you're just doing it in cold water, uh, cold alcohol. So this is a little dollop of that. And that'll keep in the fridge for ages. Sorry, now my hands are all sticky. Okay. So the lid goes on. And I'm gonna whiz that up for 15 seconds. You don't want that on, do you? Oh, I'm Since I've on. unmuted it. Well, Okay, that's all nice and blended now. So next is going to be the ice. So, oh, it smells really good. I've got my ice in a thermo server, 500 grams. Now that's been sitting there for an hour and it's the tiniest bit melted, just the tiniest bit. So thermo server to keep your things cold as well. Okay, lid goes on. And we've got a minute of blending here on um, speed 10. So it's going to get loud. While we're waiting for that to finish, pop in the chat what you use your thermo server for. Got a few people saying they do own one. I love it for curries and boiled rice. And in the summer, oh, we've got, Nathan's got three and one white one. Yes, I've got a white one. Yeah, keeping the curries warm, the rice is amazingly hot and fluffy. I actually love it too when I'm going to someone's house in summer with a salad. I use it as my serving, my serving bowl. And while it may not feel like we're all going to be getting to anyone's houses soon, we will get there eventually and we'll get, get out of this lockdown. So that's that what it looks awesome. like. It's like a slushy consistency. So pull that um, in. How good does that look? And I'll have to have a taste test, of course. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. And for the leaders or who, who did make a margarita, here's to you. Mm. Happy Saturday. Happy so good. lockdown cooking class. It's not, <laughs> it's not too strong either because um, you've got the 500 grams of ice. So it's just right. It's beautiful. Definitely give it a go. Five p it's 5 p.m. somewhere, I think, Ricky. <laughs> so and you know what? Enjoy. What's 5 p.m. in lockdown? Doesn't matter. <laughs> 
Thanks, Katie. But enjoy. No worries. Enjoy. Okay, so now we're going over to Amanda, who is going to talk about Silverside. Hi, everyone. So I am sharing with you one of our family favourites. Um, Silverside quite often used to bring back memories of my youth and not necessarily always a good thing because um, my nana, God love her, she used to boil the Silverside within an inch of its life. So one of the things I love about doing the Silverside in the Varoma is it come out, comes out and it's so moist and juicy and it's just absolutely perfect. Uh, and I actually like to cook my silver side um, with the corned beef and mustard sauce recipe in the in cookie dough. Uh, but I use my meter plus because quite often the recipe calls for 900 grams to 1200 grams. Um, however, we could be feeding anywhere from eight to 10 people. So we put a bigger chunk of meat in. We do cut it in half with a couple of kilos and we pop the meter in there because it gives us a really accurate time for cooking. Now I've had this on for the last hour and we've actually timed this perfectly because we're five seconds away from this step. So this has been cooking in the meter for 60 minutes, sorry, in the aroma for 60 minutes. So I'm gonna hit next. So it asks us to set the aroma aside and now always make sure that you turn the lid away from yourself. I'm just gonna move my little out of the way. And I'm going to pop the lid down because that's gonna be my drip tray. You know, take the aroma out and we'll just quickly show you. So you can see I've got that in there and I've got the meter in. And I've got it pushed into the thickest part of meat with where the line is. And I actually just had a couple of skewers under this um, to make sure that we get some good flow with the steam. Um, but our next step in the recipe, it asks us to insert the simmering basket and weigh in four to 500 grams of pumpkin. I don't have pumpkin. I like to work with what I've got. So we're going to use sweet potato today. So because the bowl's hot, I am going to use my spatula. Pop that in. Just like that. Hit next. This is where it asks me to weigh it in. I've already done that step. And then I'm going to place the aroma back into position. Put the lid on. The aroma. And we're going to put in 150 grams of frozen peas and 150 grams of frozen corn. So I've got both of those there. And you put those in around the meat. So we weigh those into the row. Put those out nice and evenly. Done. Next. Um, now here you would add in three to 400 grams of sauerkraut drained. We don't eat sauerkraut, so I hope you guys don't mind. We are going to skip that step because I don't like to waste food. Uh, but you can make your own sauerkraut. You do need to make it make it um, a couple of days ahead uh, at least. And um, you can put that in or you can get sauerkraut um, in a can from the supermarket. Obviously not as nice as the good stuff made from scratch. So we're going to skip that step. But what I'm going to do, um, instead of that, I'm actually going to put some uh, broccoli in. So that's just some extra veggies there. Throw those in. And I'm going to pop the lid back on. And that's going to cook for another 15 minutes. Now, while that's cooking, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to share my meter plus screen with you. So bear with me just a second. Um, I've sent a link to my iPad um, because I'm using my phone right now. And if I hit share, and I'm going to show you here and hit OK. Right, so you can actually send the link to your meter plus to anyone via web link in the menu settings. But you can see up there, um, the internal temperature of the meat right now is 64 degrees. Our target temperature is 74 degrees. And because I've just put the lid back on, it's going to take a minute to get the ambient temperature, so the temperature in the varoma itself. Um, but you can see this has told me with the cut of meat I'm cooking, there's 15 minutes remaining. Now it's going to jump around a little bit while it heats back up in there. Uh, but all I did to get this dish started is when I inserted my Meter Plus, I went into my Meter Plus app, I selected beef, I selected um, roast and rump, and then I put in whether I want it medium rare, well done, click on that and hit start cook. Left it for a little while, it's measured the ambient temperature and the internal temperature of the meat, and it's given me an estimated cooking, to, sorry, it's given me a, a cooking time based on 
how well I want the meat done. So this really is precision, precision cooking uh, and smart connected cooking on the next level. The great thing about the meat of plus, you can use it in the Roma, the oven, the barbecue, wherever you like. Uh, you can use it for fish, you can use it for meat, a number of different things. But this is what the screen looks like. Um, so you know exactly how long you've got until that meat is cooked to perfection. And then it even tells you how long to rest it. So we'll come back to this a little bit later. That's going to continue to cook now and we'll check in soon. Thank you, Amanda. For someone who claims to be not a very good cook, you seem to have a lot of knowledge on the meter. That was well done. It gives me, it, 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 honestly, this is why I have a thermomix and this is why I use the meter because they're so user-friendly for people like myself who are not confident in the kitchen. Well, you sound very professional and you know what you're talking about. Well done. Okay, so now we're over going over to Linda, who is going to make the baked camembert and the peri peri sauce from this amazing, beautiful barbecue cookbook. Hi, everybody. Uh, my kids absolutely love this. It's one that I actually do make when I've got guests coming over um, or we're away. Everyone seems to love it. But who's not to say that we can't just make it for the sake of making it? I'm not going to wait till we can gather to make it. So my kids are in for a bit of a treat this afternoon. Okay, so what I'm going to start off with doing is adding 50 grams of brown onions, which I've cut up here. So I've got 50 grams of brown onions going in. We're gonna now chop these. So three seconds on speed five. Next, we're gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl. Okay, that's done. Next, we're gonna add 80 grams of dried cranberries. So I've got also going in 40 grams of salted butter and a tablespoon of brown sugar. So we're gonna pop those in there. Now, I don't like to have extra washing up. So the next thing I need is a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. By hitting those three little dots up there, going to your scales, um, I'm just gonna weigh in 20 grams because 20 grams is equivalent to one tablespoon. So let's put in 20 grams there. Perfect. Out of there. The next step is, yep, one tablespoon of port. So we need another 20 grams there. I should have known that. Smells good. Should have poured myself a glass of port. Okay, 20 grams going in there. Next, we're gonna insert the measuring cup and we're actually gonna cook this for five minutes um, on speed one at 100 degrees. So I'm actually gonna pop this over to another thermomix to cook for five minutes. And while that's doing that, I'm actually gonna move on to our piri piri sauce. So with a barbecue cookbook, there is so many great recipes in there. I love making all the sauces. There's a great big mac sauce, um, a beautiful coriander mayo. There's lots of sauces in there, barbecue sauce. Um, I do all our sauces from scratch now, knowing that there's no preservatives in there, no additives in there. Um, and there's just satisfaction when you're doing it yourself from scratch and the taste you cannot compare. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring up the piri piri sauce. Now my kids were buying, well, prior to this cookbook coming out of me finding this recipe, we were buying the Aporto sauce um, from Aporto at $10 a jar. What a rip off, absolutely. And over the time, over time as well, they've actually changed their recipe. So you're getting all this oil now, no chili in it. So I love that I found a recipe that we have um, easy access to and can make at home. So I'm just gonna get a new bowl. And it probably tastes a lot better too, Linda. Oh, it does. And look, I'm doing it as it is from the cookbook today because I'm going to actually use this for a marinade for our chicken for lunch tomorrow. Um, so sometimes I also add a bit of lemongrass to it, a bit of lemon zest and a squeeze of lemon. Um, and that really brings it up to that Aporto sauce tasting. So yeah. with this one, I've got six to eight bird's eye chilies going in. Now, if you didn't want the heat, just take the seeds out and you'll have a milder chilli, but we all actually like hot here, so I'm leaving all the seeds in. So six to eight chilies are going in. I've got five garlic cloves going in, and I've also got some fresh bay leaves going in as well. So pop those all in there. So Linda, just to stop you there for a sec. So that amount, that does have quite a bit of heat to it. When it you... does have quite a, yep, yeah, it yeah, does. Okay. So you could use, if you didn't want to have all that heat, either take the seeds out or use a mild chilli. You can get your long red chilies, which are a lot milder. Um, if you wanted to substitute the chilies with capsicum, you'd get still a beautiful flavour um, sauce, but you wouldn't have that heat in there. So you can adjust it as you desire for your family. 
Oh, so without the measuring cup now, we are going to pop that on. And we're going to cook this also for five minutes at 100 degrees on speed two. So while that's cooking, what I'm going to do is get the next step for our camembert ready. Okay, so you'll need your Varoma tray down there. And what you need to do is grab some foil, line it with some baking paper, pop it in your Varoma dish. I've actually put some holes in there already, but just with a skewer, you can just push some holes in because we really want that steam to come through and cook our camembert. So just a few holes in the top, like so. I've only got a small camembert today. Um, sometimes I'll do two, or you could do a bigger one, depending on how many people you want to serve. So that's just going to go on there. I'm going to pop my lid on. We've got a couple more minutes on that topping. So once that's finished, I'm then going to add um, 50 gra 80 grams sorry, of uh, slithered almonds and cook this down for another minute. And that is going to become the topping for our camembert. So I will come back to you when we're up to that stage and I will steam the camembert in the meantime, about 14 to 20 minutes. Obviously, because I'm using a smaller um, a smaller camembert, it would be less time. The bigger, obviously, the more you'll need there as well. Okay. Thank you, Linda. We make um, a really lovely, I think it's a skinny mixes recipe with the camembert and it's uh, we make a pine nut pesto, basil pesto. So um, we steam the camembert in the basket and we make the pesto and then you dribble that pesto over the, the steamed camembert and you use it as a dip. It's just divine. It's beautiful. I love it. So very similar but um, different, but that's a skinny mixes recipe. Okay, so next we're over to Laura who is going to make a beautiful salad from the cookbook. Yes, so I'm showing you how to make um, this beautiful recipe from the barbecue cookbook, which I love, and also to show you that the book isn't all about meat. It's everything you need for your barbecue. So um, definitely check out the contents of the barbecue cookbook. But the first part of this recipe is it's called jerk chicken with pineapple slaw. And I just wanted to show you that I've had my meat marinating for kind of a last, the last couple of hours. I don't know if you can see that. Um, my my daughter said the marinade looked like mud, mum, because as I poured it out of the Thermomix, it was black. Um, and that's that beautiful jerk chicken. I'm using, the recipe says chicken marilands, but you can change these recipes around. I didn't want to do chicken marilands because my family don't like bones. Um, they're picky. So I have used thigh, which I've just cut in kind of pretty big chunks. So um, the next part of this recipe is the pineapple slaw, which I want to show you how great it is to make salads in your Thermomix. It's just so quick and easy. Um, it just makes barbecue so great because um, salads only take a few seconds. So I am bringing you up close to my Thermomix to show you. I'm actually going to be accessing this from my week because I've planned to cook this today. I knew ahead of time, which is, um, isn't always the case. Oh. My whole family seem to be on the Wi-Fi, so it's taking a bit longer. Um, so there's the recipe for today, jerk chicken with pineapple slaw. Anytime you come into a recipe in guided cooking, you can have a look at the info down below. So it tells you how long it's going to take and your serving portions, all your ingredients come up and you can see they're the ingredients for that jerk um, marinade. It's just such a beautiful flavor. I've made this one a few times and we love it. Um, the steps are on the side and then down the bottom are some tips and your nutrition guide. Um, normally, you just press start cooking, but I've already done the first few steps because I've done that jerk chicken. So anytime you want to come halfway through a recipe, you can scroll down here and just click on the step you're up to. And that just saved me pressing next a few times to get to it. So it's asking me to add in the cabbage. And so with that cabbage, all I've done is really roughly chop it. I just kind of chopped it in really big chunks and that's fine so that is going in it's a it's almost half a cabbage it was a bit less um just a bit less than half a cabbage you can see it in there it's a, it's, it's a fair amount um this uh, it gives you approximate um weight so if you're worried about being precise it's there as well um about half a fresh pineapple so that's going in as well and if you ever did want the scales, sorry, I better show you that as well. 
it is saying approximately 250. If you really want to be precise about it, you can press those three dots, turn on the scales and weigh that in. I think I'm gonna use a bit more. We'll see. Yeah, I wanted that to be a bit more and that's fine too. So anytime you're in guided cooking, you can just vary it to your taste. You can add whatever you want. So now it's asking me to add in my shallots. So I just add that in. And I'm also adding in a few mint leaves because I think mint goes really well with pineapple and that's totally just because I, while I was picking the spring onions out of the garden, the mint was right next to it. Otherwise I wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have bothered changing because this recipe as it is, is really good. Okay, so I'm adding in a bit of grapeseed oil. This is making the dressing now. You can use any non-flavored oil. Um, the idea of grapeseed is because it doesn't have a strong flavor like some other oils do. Press next. And now I've, I'm adding in my lime juice. Hopefully my lime, oh yeah, great. Um, I just used one lime for that. So I had a bit left over. Teaspoon of honey and look how cute these rose gold measuring spoons are from the mix shop. I love the mix shop accessories. They're always so fancy, make me feel fancy while I'm cooking. So, all right, might need to get my fingers in and help that honey out. Oh, so good. Okay. Now, next step is a bit of salt. Now I, I um, actually mill my own salt. So I get rock salt, um, Himalayan rock salt, and I mill it myself in the Thermomix. So I've got additive free cooking salt. Um, just another option, milling in your Thermomix is really easy. That only takes 10 seconds on speed 10. So super easy. A um, bit of black pepper, which I'll just grind in. Okay, so now it's telling me, and sometimes recipes do this, where a little video comes up because maybe you aren't sure what they mean. It's saying to insert the spatula through the hole in the mixing bowl lid. So if you watch that video, it's basically just showing you what I'm about to show you. Probably don't need to worry too much about it. Um, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll push you back a bit so I can show you, putting the lid on, taking the measure cup out because we don't want that for this stage and sticking in my spatula. And while I do this next step, I'm going to turn the dial and just give it a stir. And that is it. But as always, you have a look and see if it's given you the texture that, and the desired result. So I'll show you what's happened in those five seconds. We've got a pretty chopped slaw. So now my family like it a bit finer. That would be this, like that would be pretty good. It's pretty good actually, it's, it's good. I'm actually gonna go another second um, or two, but uh, yeah, I don't wanna go too long, but I have, I just think it's a bit easier to eat when it's a bit smaller, especially for little kids. I'm gonna move my Thermomix and whenever you're moving your Thermomix, just pick it up. I'm gonna get my serving plate. And there's our pineapple slaw to go with the jerk chicken, which I'll cook tonight for dinner. Um, I, I probably won't use the meter for that one because my thigh pieces are very small and I'm gonna kind of just stir fry them on the stove, but I do love the meter plus. Um, the most perfect roast chicken Christmas. Everyone voted our Christmas turkey the best because we use the meter plus. Um, anytime I use it, the results are just so good that we're thinking, our whole lives we've been cooking meat wrong and we're so glad that now we can cook it right. Um, but there you have, our, and I've just garnished with a bit of meat and there's our pineapple slaw, which 
goes really perfectly with the jerk chicken or any, you know, it's just great with anything at the barbecue. So that's me. That looks great. Another dish I have not tried. So I will definitely be putting that on it's my list. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so now we're off to uh, the lovely Michelle, who is going to put together the grilled mushrooms with avocado and parsley dressing. Right. Mute, darling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to being off mute. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's Michelle, for those of you who don't know me, and today I'm giving a go to the um, grilled mushrooms. So the joy of guided cooking means you don't even have to have made it before. The step-by-step -step instructions guide you through. Um, so I haven't made this one, but it did catch my eye, so I thought I would give it a go. So we're going to start cooking. So this recipe actually... Um, I'm just going to put my bowl on top. And we are going to add some lemon juice, which I have already squeezed. Our oil. So this um, recipe, we're going to actually be emulsifying. Um, so the Thermo mix is perfect for um, sauces where um, you don't have to worry about it splitting. The Thermo mix does all the work for you. So that's great. Um, I know Katie loves making mayonnaise. She makes that all the time. I, I like to make it too, but probably not as much as her. Um, so you can be making all different sauces and have restaurant quality meals and dressings at home um, without the cost. So that's one good thing about lockdown is um, when you've got your thermi, you're not missing out on all those fancy foods because you can make it just as good. And my pourer of my oil seems to be very slow. Okay, lovely. That's my oil. Now I'm going to put in... Um, my spices. So um, we've got some paprika and then some Dijon mustard. So it's a teaspoon of Dijon. Okay, so now what we will do, we've got my mushrooms here. And I'm going to pour that dressing over the mushrooms um, for that to um, marinate. I'll just mix that with the spoon first of all. Oh, I was wrong. Sorry, I don't emulsify. I was just um, pouring it in and then pouring it on the top, which I probably could have done earlier, sorry. And I'm just going to keep a little bit to um, dress that when it's finished. I'll just pop that aside. Sorry, this is the emulsification. I thought there was a, an emulsification. So give me two sets. I'll get another jug. And while we're waiting for the shell, I'm loving all our new subscribers. We've had one or two already. I've had little notifications to our YouTube channel. So keep going and then you can have access to all our classes if you can't make them i popped the link in the in the chat so jump yeah on. that's a very handy resource um nat my customers are loving it as well to watch things on replay or watch it again if yeah because yeah, so it's just, not like we can go out and have lunch at the pub <laughs> so i'm just pouring the oil in and my red wine vinegar So those built-in scales make that precise weighing perfect. And then now we're going to add in our flat leaf parsley. So that is enough. But I actually had some baby spinach on hand just in case I didn't have enough. That's a really great thing to bulk up your dressings and your pestos and different things um, if you don't have enough of the fresh herbs. Because people are using fresh herbs. The other day I went to Woolies at night and there was no fresh herbs left on the on the um, grocery aisle. So you know that people are cooking when you can't get fresh herbs. So I'll just put my garlic in. And that must a, be dynamic zoners. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> a shallot. 
And we're just going to pop that in and chop that up. So who loves the Thermomix chopping? Three seconds, this is going to be chopped up. So lovely. Okay, we're do we have any non-owners on today that have jumped on to see what the Thermomix is all about? Pop it in the chat. That smells absolutely divine. So that's what that looks like. So that was three seconds of chopping garlic, parsley, and um, shops. So I'm going to season that with salt and pepper, which I don't have, so I'll do that later after the fact. And then now what we're going to do... I'm going to mix this for one minute on speed four. And whilst it's doing this, I'm going to slowly pour the oil and um, red wine vinegar in underneath the lid. So um, it's going to drip pour and um, not split the sauce. My princess. Don't you? My girl. Hop down. Hop down. Up down. Good girl. While it's doing this, I'd love everyone to tell us what your favourite sauce or dressing is that you, you make or buy. Melinda told us about her um, peri peri sauce. Has anyone else got a favourite? I've seen Rachel comment. She must love the barbecue cookbook. She's commenting. Um, about the Nita Plus and some sauces and marinades that she's made in, in the Thermomix. Oh, we love a good satay sauce here as well. Malaysian satay sauce, awesome. Mm. I've actually put your recipe on my meal plan for not this week coming, but next week, Laura. I've never seen that recipe before and you've just inspired me to give that one a go. My kids love pineapple. The jerk chicken, I have so two good. for next week. It's seriously so good. You will love it so much. <laughs> awesome. And this is what this yeah. cooking class is all about, is just to, to have be inspired. We all work with Thermomix and every time I'm, I've never cooked that dish, so there's one that I'm going to put on my meal plan and um, just inspired to try different recipes from different collections. So that's that done. And then all it tells me to do now is just... Add an avocado and mix it through. So that's that there. So what I might do is my husband's got the barbecue firing. He's going to cook up these mushrooms um, and then I'll get it all sorted so you can see the finished product. So I'll hand over to Bev now. So thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, now we are over to Bev who is going to um, talk about the Five Spice Chicken and also about our bundle that starts on Monday. Thanks, Bev. Hi, hi everyone. Um, this is such a great class. I get inspired by even being part of the class too and seeing what other recipes people are cooking. So uh, my recipe for today is five spice chicken with asparagus and pea salad. Now we've made this multiple times. It's absolutely delicious. The chicken is perfect when you uh, use the meter plus, which we will be. Jeff's got the weather happening outside. So this chicken will be going out there shortly and I'll be making a salad as well. Um, I put this in front of me, keep calm and thermomix. This is such an important message for this time uh, in this season. Um, when we're in our kitchen creating, we feel calm and we, we're feeding our family and making great food. We don't miss restaurants. The restaurants have become our kitchen. All right, so let's go with this recipe. Now, I've, I've done a few of the first steps uh, just to save time. So the Weber's on outside. Um, so the next step is to, to make the coating for the chicken, which I've already made, and it's kind of been sitting with this beautiful coating for about half an hour. So in the, in the coating, I'll just read through what went into that. So you pop the bowl on top and you weigh everything in as the recipe says. So it's a tablespoon of olive oil, two teaspoons of instant granulated coffee. And like Laura said, if you wanna use the scales, you can weigh, weigh in instead of using all the tablespoons. Tables, two tablespoons brown sugar, two teaspoons of ground allspice, two teaspoons of oregano, 
And then you continue to add um, two teaspoons of paprika, half a teaspoon of black pepper, a, half, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a teaspoon of salt flakes. So then you get your spoon and you stir it all up, which is really easy to do. And then you pat it all over your chicken and let the chicken just sit for at least half an hour. So then it's um, pop the chicken into an aluminium tray. That's if you're doing it in the barbie. This could also be done in the oven. Uh, rub the chicken with the, the, um, the rub, which I've done, set aside for 30 minutes for the flavors to develop. Then it's a matter of putting in the meter. And as Amanda said before, the meter goes into the thickest part of the chicken, um, which Jeff, Jeff is the meter man in our house. And I'm loving that I'm actually going to do it this time. He's in watching the footy or something in there. So he instructed me to which end of the chicken for it to go in. As they do, Bev, watching the footy. I know, watching the footy mm. and giving me the instructions before he goes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to push it into the breast. The no, babe, you're doing it wrong, I bet you. No, <laughs> I'm joking. It's not behind me watching either, so this is good. So I'm pushing it into where that little line is, and oh, this, this meter plus is the best. Like, imagine, like, having your phone and directing your cooking. This could be 60 meters down the backyard. Our yard isn't really that big, but it could be. And you could still be organising what's going on in the barbecue while you're standing and talking to friends. Okay, so I'm putting that aside. So that is actually going soon out to the barbecue. Now, I love how um, it gives really good directions, the thermomics, sorry, not it, um, on what to do and exactly how you do that with the meter. It's not vague, it's very direct, which is great. Okay, so it's giving me a few more directions. Set the chicken aside while you make the salad. All right, so the first thing, this is the salad dressing that I'm making. It's gonna be pretty quick. So 40 grams of olive oil. Can you see my thermomix? You probably can't see it as close up as the others. I'll turn it around a bit though. No, it's fine for me, Bez. We can Good. Do it. Okay. Okay, so 40 grams. Now, if you get within a, you know, a gram or two either side, it's okay, you're winning. Oh my gosh, I'm really winning. That's 40, never get spot on really. Um, 60 grams of red wine vinegar. Isn't this great being able to make a, a dressing so easily? Just one thing after another. It's such a clean way to cook. I love the thermomix, I'm in love with it. And I have been for 10 years. <laughs> um, Okay, two teaspoons of caster sugar, got that ready. Uh, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. There it is, got it. Pop that in, scrape it off so we get the whole lot. Okay, next step, uh, a little bit of salt. And I love, uh, is it Laura's salt story? Yep. You definitely need to be milling your own salt because you don't want any of those nasty numbers in anything. If you have a thermomix, you know, you don't need to have any additives or preservatives. Okay, pop the lid on. That was a bit of pepper, the last one that went in. And this is 10 seconds, uh, right round on speed five. I've got the guitar sound. Who loves that? I love it. So gentle. It's all about keeping calm. Guitar. Now, if that's not a beautiful dressing, you probably can't see it. I'll pour it in. You'll see the color of it as I pour. It's amazing. And it's just the right thickness, the, the right, it's just perfect. Like you couldn't make a better dressing without a thermomix. Now, you do not wash the bowl. I love that. It doesn't say it, but I know that you don't in this recipe. It doesn't say to wash, which I love. Okay, so the next step is to put in water. What I'm going to be doing now is steaming some um, these little snap peas, sugar snap peas and asparagus. So 500 grams of water goes in. 
Just ease up as you get close. 509, I'm winning, it's fine. Okay, place the verana. Break the measure cup off. Put the Verona base on, because that's where the asparagus is going. Verona, amazing. Put so, so much food in there and so many different types of things can go in the Verona. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the asparagus in. So I've washed and trimmed the asparagus to about three centimetre pieces. I've only used one bunch instead of two. It's only the two of us that are going to be eating this for dinner. And then it says to put the um, in the tray. And I bought some sugar snap peas this morning and I've trimmed them. Um, where are they? Here. And they're going up on the tray. So the denser vegetables always go towards the steam sauce. So you'll find most recipes will tell you to put the dense veggies at the bottom. Okay, so secure the lid, there it is. And this is just going to steam those veggies uh, for eight minutes on speed two. Okay, so um, when they get, when they're steamed, when they're finished, I'm gonna let them cool down and put them in this salad. The recipe tells you that you'll need to slice some red onion and 60 gram of mixed salad um, leaves, which I've got ready. So all of that's going to mix around with this beautiful dressing, which I have here. And that's, that's going to be our dinner later when this beautiful chicken is cooked. So what I'm gonna do is take a picture of all of this and we'll post it in, uh, sorry, we will um, pop it into the email that comes after the class. Okay, I'll put that aside. Now, let me just very quickly tell you about these skewers. They're awesome. We used them just a couple nights ago. I'm gonna show you also, send a picture for um, what we use them for. We did really thick, chunky, beautiful uh, beef and I made a marinade. Uh, it's called the um, Aussie Spice Marinade. Where's my book? Oh, here, right in front of me. Aussie Spice Rub. It was fabulous, it's so easy to make. And I rubbed the beef in it. It made it tasty and it made it tender. It was so good. And I had all sorts of chunky veggies. Jeff cooked them outside in the Weber. And these are great, they're stainless steel. They don't, they've got a flat edge so that they're not gonna, you know, things aren't gonna spin around on them. They've got little caps to protect the point. So you put them back on, they're dishwasher safe. They have a little locking edge at the bottom, you can slide it. You know, sometimes when you're trying to get stuff off, it's trying, you're trying to be, you know, you don't want to make a mess and it's so hard and suddenly everything- Do that pretty off. woman trick, you know, where she- yeah, <laughs> So that won't happen with these, no embarrassment. They'll be just perfect. And, and their dishwasher's uh, safe as well. They're lengthy. We only had one each, that was enough. We made four and I took the others, my, my son, got the other two and he's gobbled them up but the instructions are on the not the instructions sort of the highlights are on the box but I've told you most of them um so that's part of the 50 the 49 dollar deal the package deal the meter plus which is amazing like we've all raved about that tonight and the barbecue cookbook now you couldn't be any more set up for summer than having this bundle offer and it's 49 dollars with your Thermomix. If you've already got a Thermomix, go and get these out of the, um, the shop anyway, because they're awesome. All right, that's just about for me, but I just want to tell you one more thing. This is what I've been doing today. So I did a live this morning. I, I cooked um, marinara sauce and I did a live. And then straight after that, I went on to talk to a beautiful young girl. She's only 23, who's coming into our team. So. You know, that was part of my day. And then now it's the cooking class, which is so good. It's so much fun. Uh, a little while after this, I'll be um, helping someone with their brand new Thermomix. And tonight we're having a dinner party with our friends online. So this will be our dinner that we'll actually eat a bit later. And I'll be making my margarita then. But what I'm saying is all of this is from home in my slippers. 
uh, and just having fun. Like this has been such a great day. I feel productive, I'm not sitting around thinking, what am I going to do? I've always got something to do. And, you know, if you are looking at looking for something more to do, this could not be a better thing to do. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you're going to meet people. You can inspire people. You can learn about all these beautiful recipes. Um, yeah. So I just thought I'd put that as a possibility for maybe some of you out there. If you're interested, you definitely need to have a look at, you know, what this is all about. Anyway, that's me done. So um, you will Thank see you, me Bev. later in a picture. Thank you, Bev. And Bev, did you want to share with us how long you've been with Thermomix? Yeah, sure. Um, look, I'm a nurse and I still am. I still do a bit of nursing because I love it. Um, but, you know, in 2011, I was working uh, as a nursing unit manager in a, a recovery program. Sorry, I'm going into a bit more detail on that. Um, and I was offered a bowl of soup at lunchtime by the director of this recovery it was a, um, a custodial recovery program for men. Um, anyway, I'm eating the soup and I said, Jane, what's in the soup? It's amazing. And she said, um, vegetable stock paste. All right, so the next day after a bit of research, I ordered a Thermomix just on what I saw online. And I thought if I become a consultant, I'll learn everything about it. So since 2011, I have been part of Thermomix in one capacity or another. I've tried out this and tried out that, but I'm, I'm really happy he settled in a team leader role. And yeah, it's been one of the best things that are uh, biggest and best decisions that I've ever made. Uh, it gives me variety. You know, I still look after people in addiction, but I also have part of my life as Thermomix, you know, which I love. Sorry, long story. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Yeah. And you know, your passion, it really oozes out from you. You, you clearly love Devon Mix and what you do, and that's really lovely to see. It's funny you should say that, because when in 2011, when I was dipping my toe in, thinking, will I be a consultant? Could I do this? I couldn't. I didn't think I could. But I met someone who'd been around for five years, and I thought, she's, like, really passionate and very excited. She's been around for five years, and it's like, you know, and I get it now, you know, because it's an ongoing learning and wow you're dealing with a wow product so you know you can't get bored with that and it keeps getting better so it keeps absolutely. adding wow yeah absolutely thank mm. you Ben thanks for sharing your story it's all right thank you for asking and um those skewers so my husband has been I've been asking him okay so we're in lockdown for Father's Day what would you what do you want to do well I think you've just inspired me to do something from the cookbook using those skewers because he, he loves meat, he loves barbecues. So definitely, I think we'll be using those skewers and that recipe. We haven't used them up until now, I have to admit. And because we it's it's part of the bundle deal and we're doing this class, I thought I've got to get them out and use them. But I tell you what, I'm going to be using these every week. I mean, yeah. what was I missing out on? You know, with Thermomix, you have to get in and try things. Otherwise, you're missing out. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And just another little hint, the Fire Spice Rub. Um, a few years ago, I bought some little plastic test tube containers and I actually use them as um, little Christmas gifts in hampers. So that's another little tip that you could use. Make your own homemade chicken spice rub, buy spice rub and give it away as Christmas presents or gifts. Great idea. Thanks. Okay. So, oh. The silver side is ready. I just received a message about five minutes ago. Off okay. to Amanda. Thanks, Nat. So our silver side is done. So just to put you on the steps that we've gone through, um, it actually cooked for that extra 15 minutes and then it pops up and says, hey, check your veggies and your meat. If you want to extend a little bit longer, click next and you can cook for a little bit longer. Now, the next step was to cook it for six minutes, but thank you very much, Meter Plus. It actually let me know I needed to cook it for a further nine minutes, which I did. So I just extended the cook time in the recipe so we get that perfectly cooked meat. Uh, now, the step we're up to right now, um, it asks you to take the uh, the meat and the veggies out. And um, Nat, do you mind if I really quickly just share? I'm going to share. Not at all. That's fine. Bye. Michelle's got the, uh, the mushrooms going, so I think the more time that we sharing things the mushrooms will have more time to cook 
Brilliant. So you can see up on the screen, guys, we hit our target temperature. In fact, we went a little bit over. Um, so what I've done is I actually took the meat and veggies out and put them in one of my, um, I don't know if I should be ashamed to say this, one of my eight thermo servers. I love them. They're my serving dishes for everything. Um, but I popped the meat in there and you can see up on the screen that it's telling me I need to rest it and it's telling me how long I need to rest it for. Um, so that was just the next step. Once it's finished cooking, I've got an alert five minutes beforehand. Once it's finished cooking, it's actually telling me now how long I need to let it sit and rest before we go through to the next step. So I'm going to hit stop share there. So I popped um, the silver side into a thermo server, put it in there, popped the veggies into another thermo server. Um, I've got my sweet potato here in lieu of my pumpkin. I pop that over here. And the next step in the recipe is that it is asking me to reserve 100 grams of the liquid in the bowl. You can see it there. So I'm going to pop that in there. I'm going to go to the corner, select the scales, and I'm going to pour 100 grams of the, pool, the cooking liquid. Now, a little bit over. Well, actually, I'm a lot over. Um, so let me just pour a little bit back. There we go, 103 grams. So I'm going to reserve 100 grams. Click to get out of there and hit next. So it says to discard the remaining cooking liquid. So it's going to, normally I find something for it, that's fine. <laughs> Pop that in there. And we're going to put in 30 grams of unsalted butter. Now, not related to the barbecue bundle, however, this week, uh, I have, at the moment, I will not go to the supermarket. I, I, even though I live 600 metres from a supermarket, unless it's something I would drive 30 minutes for, I'm not going up there. So this week, I actually, uh, for my little girl's birthday, um, we were doing pancakes, and I had run out of unsalted butter. So I made some. Aha. Uh, and I'm storing it in the butter bowl, uh, which is on, I was really fascinated to use this for the first time. It keeps it at keeps your butter at room temperature and nice and fresh. Mm. So I'm going to use of my homemade unsalted butter. My mum's on our mum's sanity Zoom last night. We're like, you did what? So um, just to show you how beautiful, soft and smooth, you know how you get those lovely butter curls when you go to a restaurant? That's how good this is. So I'm going to put 30 grams of butter in. And this allows you to store butter at so you know how you get that frustration when you're going to do a recipe and you realize you should have taken butter out half an hour beforehand? This solves that problem. And then it just goes in here, use the water to seal that in and keep it fresh. Let me pop that over there. So I've got my 30 grams of unsalted butter. I'm also going to put in 30 grams of plain flour. Three hundred grams of milk. I'm always paranoid I've measured it wrong, so I pour slow. I apologize, guys. Nailed it. All right, on to the next step. We're going to put in half to one teaspoon of salt, which I have over here. I'm going to do a few quick turns. Um, now, I'm just going to let you know, I've tweaked this sauce recipe. So it asks for one teaspoon of whole grain mustard. Um, so I'm going to put in, you know, close to that, that much. Hit next. And then it asks for one and a half teaspoons of mustard powder. I'm not going to put mustard powder in. I'm going to put about 100 grams of just tasty cheese, which I shredded earlier. So I'm going to make this a bit more of a cheese sauce. All right, so I'm going to pop that in. Hit next, and 100 grams of the reserved cooking liquid. Next again, then we're going to pop the lid on, this time with the measuring cup, because obviously as we've been cooking along, we have been cooking with the um, aroma on top, so we didn't need measuring cup. Got my lid. Next, and that is now going to cook for seven minutes at 90 degrees on speed three. 
So instead of a purely mustard sauce, uh, it's going to be a cheese sauce and it comes out and tastes is divine. It's amazing. Um, one of the arguments I have with my mum is she's got two thermomixes on her bench. And one of the arguments I have with her is that um, she's really stubborn and keeps doing her cheese sauce on the stove and having me stand there to stir it. So I am going to make sure the next time she does that, that we get her on the Thermomix and even use part of the recipe. So that's the great thing about the guided cooking is if you only want to use part of the recipe, you saw Laura go into a recipe before and she just simply tapped and went to the steps that she wanted to follow just because she'd done some earlier. Um, you can actually just go in and use part of the recipe. You don't have to do the whole thing. Uh, so if you're not confident to tweak it like I have, um, then feel free to go in and find a, a similar recipe, tap in and just use that portion. Now, when it comes to tweaking recipes, um, as I said earlier, I am not a confident cook. By far, I'm not a confident cook, which is why I invested in the meter plus and the Thermomix. Um, and just over time, I have I've learned, one of the joys of being a consultant, I have learned how to do different things and attending a lot of classes and everything else. Um, it's taught me how to tweak recipes to taste and to flavour, how to substitute and things like that. So, you know, if you want to get more confident to stray from guided cooking or tweak your guided cooking, Definitely jump on some more classes or watch some of our previous classes so you can get confident to do that. So I'm going to leave this. By now, I'm guessing my one-minute resting time is up on the uh, silver side, so I'm going to start chopping that. And what I want you to do is try something you haven't done or something that a recipe that you just can't bring yourself to do in the thermic that you've always done on the stove or something else. And give it go, give it go doing it in the thermomix. You know, challenge yourself. It's a lot of fun. That's the, that's the way you'll learn. Um, if it doesn't work out the first time, that's okay. Reach out to your consultant or to your, uh, uh, your customer groups that you're in and just ask the question, which is amazing. So um, jump in, give it a go. I'm going to let that keep cooking and pass back over to you. And uh, I'll show you the finished product a little bit later on. Amazing. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, so I believe our grilled mushrooms that were on the barbecue are ready. Michelle. Yes, my husband has finished them off and I have dressed them. They look absolutely stunning. I can't wait to eat them. So but they smell um, good too. Yeah, they do. Really, really good. So I did five large mushrooms and I've got plenty of that um, stuffing left. Um, so, yeah, they'll be aside for our barbie tonight. But what I wanted to quickly just show you while we're here, those of you who don't have a TM6, um, the Thermomix cleans itself. So just with a quick swipe, I can go to pre-clean and there's four different options. Um, the more intense as you go up, I'm just going to go to universal and clean my oily bowl ready for my next dish. So thanks so much. Hopefully you've enjoyed today. Um, and that's the... The recipe of what it's meant to look like in the cookbook and I'm pretty sure I nailed it so <laughs> with the help of my husband thanks guys thank you Michelle and just quickly how long have you been with us Michelle uh, I've been a consultant um, for seven years so I came on board to earn my thermomix for three seven years ago I was only hanging around for three months and um, I'm still here I've almost sold 600 thermomixes in that time so I'm pretty proud of my my achievement and being out in, the, in my community changing people's lives with this machine. Amazing. Linda, how's that camembert going over there? It is going great. Before I go to the camembert, though, I'm going to go back to our piri piri sauce. So those um, chilies and the garlic and that was toasting off for the five minutes. So the next step we're going to do now is add 150 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Bring that down so you can see it. Oops, I'm on the cord. One hundred and fifty-three. That's all good. Next, we're going to add two teaspoons of paprika, and I've also got a teaspoon of oregano going in. And at this point is where I would be adding my my lemon zest as well, and my lemongrass. I've also got some lemon juicy, twenty grams of lemon juice going in. We're going to pop our lid on. Next, we're going to now 
Um, sorry, <laughs> we're gonna now turn this to two minutes to speed to at and cook it at 100 degrees. So we'll leave that to the side and we'll go back to the camembert. So I've got another thermomix ready here. So you know with your Varoma, you can use your lid as a bit of a trivet so you're not making a mess on your bench. I'm gonna take that down. Get a close look at the camembert. It's nice and soft. You can see that that's all melted beautifully inside. That looks delicious. It is. I'm just gonna grab my little serving board and you could put it on a board itself. I'm actually gonna just pop it into a little bowl. I'm gonna use that little spatula to take it off. Pop that to the side. Okay, so while the others were cooking, that's my beautiful mixture that's got the, um, the cranberries in it and the almonds in it. And all I'm gonna do is just spoon some of that over the top of this camembert. And I'm only gonna use half of it because I've only got a small camembert. Pop that on there. It smells absolutely beautiful. Um, if you're worried about the port in it, when you do cook it, it's the, the alcohol evaporates, so it's okay for the kids to have. Now, I'm gonna show you how beautiful this cuts and oozes out. So you can see that beautiful, soft camembert on a cracker, nothing beats it. I think it's better than any fig paste or quince paste. It's just got the beautiful sweetness from the cranberry. The almonds give it that beautiful texture as well. And the great thing about this recipe as well, I'm the type if I am having people over, I like a clean kitchen, I like to get all my prepping done early. You can actually make the mixture the day before, pop it in the fridge and then just put it in your thermomix um, on the warm up mode and get it nice and warm before you actually pop it onto your camembert. So that's something that we're gonna to enjoy together later on. Put that to the side. And we've got um, two seconds left on this machine. We go to next. We're gonna keep the measuring cup in. And we're now just going to blend this for one minute at speed nine. And just go up gradually. Tell you what though, that camembert, it's uh, definitely something that we can make on Father's yeah, Day, yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear? We could hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, camembert, definitely something that we'll make on Father's Day, I think, too, with the skewers. Okay. If you could smell my kitchen right now. My mouth is salivating because I can actually just, just the heat of the chilies. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the color of that. Now, because my lid's already dirty, I can actually use that as a bit of a funnel over my jar. I might just pop it off this way. Pop it over your jar. So just a bit of a guide so you're not making a mess everywhere. And let you have a look at that as it comes out. Just don't want to spill it on the laptop. Just look at that colour. Now, if you wanted a thicker sauce, obviously you could reduce the oil in it. But like I said, I'm going to use it as a marinade for my chicken. Um, I'll marinate it with half of it and the other half then I'll just use it to actually baste the chicken with. Um, it smells so good that you feel like drinking it. But anyway, absolutely delicious. Cheaper than buying store-bought. And um, we're going to have a very happy family tomorrow at lunchtime. Looks amazing. Thanks, Linda. I believe the silver side is ready for Amanda to present to you all. Oh yes, and goodness, I just fed it to Master Eight, who is my by far bossiest cooker in the house, eater in the house. <laughs> so here's, I'm not gonna tilt this because you know I'm gonna spill it. Um, <laughs> but here is my sauce. I popped into a gravy boat. I'm just gonna 
pour it very gently. There we go. Oh, that looks delicious. And again, I'm not going to tilt this very far, but here we have it. So you've got your silver side and your veggies. I love layered cooking. Um, while we've been doing this class and I've been cooking, everything's been going in my dishwasher. So I have no cleanup. Love it. And you have beautiful precision cooked meat and veggies all in the thermie. So definitely I recommend giving this recipe a try. Um, stick with the mustard recipe. If you want to tweak it and add some peas in there, tastes delicious. Um, I've actually got too much for us, so I'm going to do a door drop um, to my mum around the corner and that's their dinner as well. So enjoy. Yum. Looks like you're going to eat well tonight, Amanda. Oh, I think so. Thank you. Bev, did we have, was, were you going to present any, anything else after you cooked? No, or that was just going to be the vegetable? Yeah, no, look, my veggies, I don't know if you can see them. My veggies are, like, I like the way it, it cooked them, but not overcooked them. So they're still a bit crispy. My thermomix is cleaning itself. You can hear that noise. Uh, no, the chicken will take a while. Um, so, yeah, I haven't really got that. Fabulous. Chicken. No, I want to check on the veggies. That's all. I knew the chicken would take a while. Thank you. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of our class. But um, we just wanted to quickly show a video. If you think that you could do what we do, sharing the passion of the Thermomix, I'd love for you to just have a quick, it only goes for three minutes, have a quick look at this video and um, we're going to be staying on afterwards to have a chat if you'd like to know a little bit more about becoming a Thermomix consultant. There usually is a little bit of music to this, but that's okay. It just It's just like background music. So just have a look at the visuals and the words and um, some of the images that come up. And if you've got any questions, we'll stay on afterwards to have a chat. That business kit is amazing value. There is just so much in there. It's awesome. And this is the commissions that you could, different commissions that you can earn as becoming a mix consultant. Thank you, Nicole. We hope you've taken away some hints and tips. I know that I have. I'll definitely be making the, the jerk chicken and I'll be using my skewers on Father's Day. Here we go. This is just a snapshot of some of the commissions that you can make just by sharing the love of the Thermomix with your community. Definitely making the camembert, Viv. Yes. So am I. Lots of incentives that you can earn at becoming a Thermomix consultant. all the cookbooks, the meter, pretty much everything that you can buy from the mix shop, I have earned as a Thermomix consultant and team leader along the years. So did you subscribe to the, um, the YouTube channel? If you didn't, the link is in our chat um, and this recording will go up onto the YouTube channel as well. So, and that, was that the beers done, the little video? Thank you, Laura. Yep, that finished. So has anyone got any questions? What did you think of the class? Did you all take away some hints and tips? Yes. Who's going to Ned, make that jerk? Sorry, Ned, it's Rachel. Can Hi. you just go into a bit more as a new consultant, how many people you have to bring in for your first month or so? So, Yeah, so to qualify as a Thermomix consultant, we ask you to, um, in the 60 days, to qualify with three sales. 
So that's really achievable. But what we like to do is we like to set you up for success. So prior to becoming a Thermomix consultant and signing on the dotted line, we do go through the whole booking process and we get you to write down who do you know. Um, there really is um, walking alongside your process before you sign up as a consultant. Um, so who, who invited you along to the class, Rachel? Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Michelle can um, probably have a little bit of a, a personal chat to you about that if you are interested. Um, definitely, because you know there, there it is. There is lots of incentives, and you know it is really fun. We love doing what we do, and um, you know I started in two thousand and fifteen, and it really has evolved with the times. You know, when COVID hit, we're like, how are we going to keep doing this as Thermomix consultants? Now we're in that virtual space, and and people are loving these virtual classes. And we're sharing the love of the Thermomix virtually through our virtual classes and cooking experiences and online workshops. And um, yeah, it, it's really great to see. Thank you. And that it's a great thing. Like Rachel's got her Thermomix. So it's minimal outlay of the earnings and extra cash on the side when in these uncertain times as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I started off, I had three little kids under four. I literally thought I was going to jump on to earn a little bit of extra pocket money on the side. Uh, that was 2015. And what is it, six years later, I'm still here and loving yes, it. Yes, this is my second. I had a 10 five and now I've got a six. So I love the product. So yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, look, it, it, it's a really lovely community to work with and a good, good group of people, a good team. Um, everyone's passionate. And um, yeah, you just just sharing that love is, is what we're all about. Now, I'll, I'll jump in and say, as a consultant, I'm from a 17-year corporate background. Um, so Thermomix was a completely new world for me. I joined to earn my Thermomix with no intention of staying, and I'm still here three and a half years later. Um, and as someone who, you know, self-admitted, not very confident cooking, um, one of the extra, I suppose, benefits of being a consultant is that it teaches you, you learn so much, and especially when you're passionate, um, what you learn and what you get to share is phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I never knew how to make bread prior to owning a Thermomix. And now we make bread daily. Um, you know, even things like yogurt. I used to buy those little pouches for my children. Um, and now I make my own yogurt. And I love sharing all that knowledge with my network and my community. So... Yeah, has any other consultant, team leader, sorry, got anything to share with anyone while we're here? I think most of us have been here for quite a few years and probably most of us joined up just to earn a Thermomix or to do that, something. That was me, um, 2009, so it's been 12 years now. Um, <laughs> next week, I started on the 1st of September and um, definitely I, I had a job I worked in HR corporate for 10 years I had two kids when I first started so this it wasn't meant to be a thing but once I got started I just loved it so much and I just I just honestly think everyone should see the Thermomix and whether they purchase it on is up to them but I just love being the one being able to show it to everyone and I think it's um, just such an amazing product for helping people's lives you know saving saving people time and health and money and you know getting having fun in the kitchen and you know the energy savings so I just think it's an amazing product for so many reasons I just think everyone needs to see it so I need to stay in this job and keep showing it to everyone yeah. but I thank my lucky stars every day because I'm a mum of four and I get to call myself a stay-at-home mum but I'm earning a pretty good income as well yeah. at the same time so just super grateful for Thermomix not just the machine but the business side of it as well so yeah. if you if you want to check out what's involved in becoming a consultant, I really recommend it. Even if you just stay for a little while, like you don't have to stay as long as all the rest of us, but um, you know, it's flexible, but we obviously love it for so many reasons. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for sharing. And that's actually, uh, you know, right. I mean, it, it's that flexibility of the role. I'm a stay at home mum. I have three children and only recently um, until about two weeks ago, my husband was in a different state living and he's been living five years away from us um, in the defense force so i was pretty much a solo parent looking after our three kids and um i was still able to provide for our family network and um still be present for my children and be able to you know attend their assemblies and, and go to their school 
carnivals and all that, but still bring in a great income, sharing the passion for the family mix. So um, I love that flexibility. I came from an event management background where there was long hours, um, lots of weekend work, Friday, Saturday nights, Sundays. I now choose the hours that I want to work. Um, and um, it's a really good, really good gig. And I, I wouldn't be here six years later if I didn't love it. So yes, if you are interested, reach out to whoever invited you to the class or have a chat to us now. Let us know, come off mute, send us a little message. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for jumping on today. We hope that you've taken away some hints and tips. Um, if you haven't got a meter or the barbecue cookbook, we hope it's inspired you to maybe jump on the mix shop and um, have a look, all the skewers as well, um, and purchase those. They might be a really good Father's Day present with um, Father's Day coming up next weekend. I think we might actually have a competition on the meat shop where if you purchase between certain dates for Father's Day, you can go in the drawer to win a $100 or $150 voucher. I'm just remembering off the top of my head um, for the meat shop as well. I think it's $100. So um, get on there and check it out. It's on our Facebook and Instagram pages um, if you want to know the details for the competition. But check it out. Um, because we have some really great offers and bundles there too. And, um, yeah, if you haven't already guessed, love the Meter Plus. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Thanks. Thank you so much. YouTube channel as well. There's other classes there from previous weekends that we've run, um, so have a look at that as well. And we'll, it will keep you up to date with There's a little video there, I think a couple of the Meter Plus as well. Um, so yeah, jump on that as well. Thank you so much for jumping on today. We hope that you've enjoyed it.